Good morning. Excuse me. Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I was choking. <laughs> I tried to, you know, it's hard. It's Tuesday. I was trying to take a drink of water and I couldn't pull it off. Uh, that's what you get here. I'm Joe Jacklin, CEO of the Patriot Radio uh, News Hour, Patriot Trading Group, KHNC. The list is starting to pile it out, you know, like anything else in this world. You got to do three, four, five different jobs just to make the ends meet. 800-951-0592, the physical delivery of wealth insurance. Legal, lawful, constitutional, biblical, tender. Talking about gold and silver, and we do it, quite honestly, better than anybody the website at allamericangold.com. Make sure it's part of your daily routine. Uh, don't forget about the medals plan. Listen, we got that free bonus. Bonus. Slip me a bonus. 10% bonus to anybody who signs up for our medals plan. Uh, that That's where you get four deliveries a year. Uh, remember, we started that because we wanted everybody to be able to have the opportunity uh, to, to purchase hard assets. Listen, we, you got to have them. I know uh, you, you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, it'll be fine. No, it won't. Even even the, the cheerleaders on the idiot box, even those guys, when you really press them, even they'll tell you, yeah, you're right. You got to have some. Right, and, and, and they, may, they may, you know, five percent, ten percent, twenty percent, fifty percent. You know, that's up to you, but make sure you got some because you're going to need it. Right, when when the debt markets go, right, that's when you want to have your gold and silver. It's just that simple. So we created this metals program. And we, we said, hey, listen, the minimum's a hundred bucks a month. And I know, listen, for a lot of people, that's a lot. That's what's a and that's what's sad about today. That's a lot. But it's wildly popular. I mean, Wendy <laughs> Wendy did work super hard. She did a great job. You know, we just had uh, the first quarter deliveries done, and this thing it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I actually think this quarter was the best one ever. Right, Wendy. Wendy agrees. By far, you got the best stuff. You got great pricing, uh, and now we're offering a ten percent bonus for anybody who signs up in the plan. There is no maximum. The minimum's a hundred a month. Maximum is whatever you want to do. Uh, a lot of you out there, so many people now. Right, you're you're quote in the self-employed bracket. Right, and maybe your self-employment is I do three different jobs. Maybe you're lucky enough that, nope, I, I, I just do the one, but I'm a contractor. I, I'm a temp hire guy. Maybe maybe you're the guy that cleans the carpets or, or delivers the packages or, or drives the people where they need to go. And you don't have access to a 401K. It's a great place. And I don't care what they tell you because they actually know the truth. Gold has performed just as good as the stock market since 1971, period. It has. Do the math yourself. And now with a 10% bonus, if you want to know more, we've got a a little icon on our website for the metals plan. You can sign up there. or I mean, you can check it out there if you want to sign up. Uh, Then uh, give us a call here, and we'll get you going at 800 9510592 Nine five one zero five nine two. What a great basketball game last night! You know, I'm a basketball junkie. I, I coached basketball for like twenty years. Matter of fact, I was at a birthday party this weekend, and the first coaching job I ever had was at South Point Catholic High School uh, down in Tucson. And, and if you don't, a lot, I know people here in the Valley, you know the school I'm talking about. They are a, a powerhouse, if you will, for Tucson. And I started coaching there, and I was at a party this weekend. And one of the seniors 
on the team when I was the freshman coach was at this party. And he came up to me, and we started talking. He actually married the sister of one of the uh, the, the brothers, uh, the uh, sister of one of the brothers that was on the basketball team. It was crazy. It's crazy how many people and how many lives you can affect. And I was watching that game last night. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, what, I, I, I didn't have a horse in the race, right? I didn't. Texas Tech, Virginia, I didn't really care one way or the other. I just wanted a great game. It was. Uh, went into overtime, uh, and the Cavaliers pulled it out. So if you saw that, at least we were entertained. I beat some of the stuff that's been out there. Uh, and, again, I guess that's it for sports. Now you just got baseball, I guess. Baseball and, uh, well, hockey, but I don't count that. Uh, that's also out there. A lot of things to talk about. Dow's down a couple hundred points. The president was on Twitter today. What did he say? What didn't he say? Where did all the job openings go? And so much more. And then what happens when the owner of the mall decides they don't want the keys? Yeah. <laughs> Right? I, I'm like, you know, I, I get it. Like when, you know, remember we called it jingle mail when people said, here, just take the keys back to my house. I don't want it anymore. Now, for the first time, the largest loss ever. As a property management group said, eh, who do we give these keys to? We'll talk about that when we return. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two golds up uh, what seven eight bucks thirteen oh five silvers up uh, about four or five cents here fifteen dollars and twenty seven cents on silver as I said the Dow's down a couple of hundred points uh, jolts that uh, they're a survey uh, but they they tell us how many job openings they are. And apparently, uh, there's not nearly as many as there once was. Jobs openings plunged 538,000. Well, that's, a, that's a lot of people. 538,000 job openings apparently are no longer open. Uh, the biggest drop in job openings in, I, I think it's like five years, something like that. Uh, that had the market on edge. There was, of course, the, the President Trump now talking more tariffs, this time on the EU and Airbus. It is Boeing. By the way, Boeing stock down again today. Uh, more more order cancellations and the like happening. Uh, so that makes sense. Hey, if Boeing's struggling, let's try to make sure Airbus uh, doesn't get more of the business. And then this one. I've never seen this before. So I'm like, man, i got to talk about it. Because I've always wondered, what's happening with all these malls, right, and all the store closings, and everyone's acting like it's not happening. Wait, another reason why you got to really pay attention. Because it's not like these properties are bought and paid for. They're all leveraged. They're all borrowed. So, for the as far as I and I know it's not the first one, but the largest commercial mortgage backed securities default in history happened the other day, and that's the same thing about you know at the height of the crisis. Right, we're still we're we're still in it. I know they had you know the the Dow and the rally and and nobody pay attention and and we tripled and and quadrupled the size of all the debts to try to cover it up. The dust has settled, and the numbers are now coming out. A two hundred million dollar. Commercial real estate mortgage on an indoor mall of over 1 million square feet in a suburb of Kansas City, Missouri. 
So you think about, first of all, this is in the mall in Delaware. Right? A suburb of, of Kansas City, a million square feet. And the mall wasn't empty. I want to point that out too. The mall was not empty. Generated a hundred and forty nine point seven million dollar loss for commercial mortgage backed security investors. So think about this. If you're lucky enough to own a piece of this two hundred million dollar loan, don't worry. It only lost 75% of its value. Wow. The mall was sold at a uh, foreclosure auction last week. The mall was owned by Simon Property Group. By the way, they're the largest mall landlord in America. So I always wondered, if you're the landlord, right, everybody gives you the keys back. What happens when you're like, you know what, I don't want these keys. Here, you take it. Well, this is what happens. They didn't take the loss. It was not a shuttered zombie mall. Right, we've got those here. Right, you, I don't need to tell you about it. Every, every state's got the zombie malls. But this was a live super regional mall. The Independent Center had 88 stores. You know, they had Macy's, Dillard's, Dick's. According to the record, Simon Property defaulted on the mortgage in May of 2017. Must be nice. Right, hey, we, 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 yeah, we're not paid, but we'll still own. It took two years uh, for them to finally give it up. When it came due, because it said it was unable to replay the loan at maturity due to the size of the loan compared to the net operating income that the property was generating. In other words, here's what they did they said, okay. The, the loan is due. And this is something all everybody, people don't under, quite understand how this works. That when these big companies take out loans, it's not like a house. Right? When we go out, because let's say, what's our biggest expense? A house. Well, that might be a car. <laughs> right? Either one, though. Right? We pay. And every month we pay, the balance goes down. And eventually, when you come to the end of your paying, you own it. Right? And, you know, you still got the the taxes and the upkeep and all that stuff, but you own it. That's not how corporations work. So this mall was built in 1974. And I'm sure it's been added on to several different times. But 1974, it's not paid off? Uh Uh-uh. Matter of fact, Simon Property Group, well, they got a loan on this thing for $250 million. In 2007, it's kind of weird, right? Oh, seven? Got $250 million loan on it. See, they only pay interest. Right? And, and, and so it, it makes sense, right? They probably had some 10-year balloon on the loan. As soon as the balloon came due, they said, ah, no thanks. So they had a $250 million loan in 07. They said that, hey, by May of 2017, 
They believed the value of the mall was now only $136 million. So they said, you know what? We don't want to pay. And we're not going to pay it off either. It's not worth anything. The $136 million they said it was worth in 2017 only fetched $63 million at an auction in February of 2019. How about that? I just thought that was amazing. So the <laughs> the best part was, at least the way I'm reading it, Simon Property Group really didn't take that big of a hit. They forced all the losses out of the people that own the debt. Man, i got to figure out how to do that. Uh, but, it, but anyway, it, it was the largest retail ball loss ever. Bank of America. Ooh, this was a good one. Now, remember, there's no inflation, folks. Bank of America today said the Fed is full of it. Right? I'm actually excited. I love it. Trump's nominating people that, let's face it, these aren't academics. These aren't guys that went to Harvard and Princeton and Yale. Well, maybe they did. But they're not the typical guys that is nominated. Stephen Moore, Herman Cain. Because they're full of it. They're absolute liars. Now, I know they got some fancy mathematical formula to back up their lie. Right? I mean, right? They, they do. Oh, well, we got this formula. So, you know, look at It's in the math. See? The formula says there's no inflation. Okay. What do your banker buddies say? Bank of America this morning announced it's right raising the minimum wage for employees this year and says that it's going to continue to raise it all the way through 2021. If you get a job at Bank of America in 2021, and, and, and I'll throw this out there, it's got to be a full-time job. I don't know if they're actually going to offer any full-time jobs, but if you did, you would make $41,000 a year. Starting May 1st, the hour minimum, uh, minimum wage will rise to $17 at Bank of America. And by 2021, they say the new minimum wage at the bank will be $20 an hour. And now I'm starting to think, where are we headed? And I remember when I first started at working at Patriot, and I was doing the shows with Eric, and at the time, I want to say the minimum wage was like $5, something like that. And he was saying, hey, minimum wage got to be $15. And he wasn't talking about, hey, in 15 years, it's got to be $15. He was like, hey, right now. Right? And remember, they keep talking about how, you know what, wages have not moved. Outside of the uber rich, wages haven't grown this millennium. In other words, after inflation, you're actually earning less. And, and I was like, come on can't pay $15. A Big Mac meal would be like seven or eight bucks. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Of course, go get a Big Mac meal. It's like seven or eight bucks. It may even be nine. And now when I talk to her, you know what he says? Oh, 50. It's got to be 30. Bank of America now says, hey, by 2021, we're going to pay 20 that's $41,000 working full-time. And you know what? Here's the sad part. All of us know that's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. And I'm, and I'm thinking about Target. Target says, if you get a job at Target now, $13 an hour. 
I think Walmart said 12. Now Target said 13. Right? Who's got 14, 15? B of A says 20. Who knows? Maybe we'll get there. $20 an hour starting in 2020 uh, from Bank of America. I guess that's what it, well, I guess, what does that really say? About the no inflation thing. Because you think Bank of America is doing it because they, they just want to be nice? No, they're doing it because, you know what? Hey, if you're going to work for us, we don't want you to rob us. So here's uh, here's enough just to get you by. And then I saw this headline. I wonder where gas is headed. $4 a gallon may be coming Sooner than we think, according to uh, Gas Buddy. Yeah, I don't know who Gas Buddy is, but I guess they they are the ones that track gas prices. California already the highest in the nation at three seventy seven a gallon. By the way, gasoline prices, according to Gas Buddy, up forty nine cents in the last month. Saying California is going to break four bucks. This week, you know, Arizona not far behind. Patriot Radio News Hour. That twenty bucks is going to come in handy. You'll get uh, five gallons. We'll be back right after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. After President Trump officially declared a state of emergency on our southern border, many Americans were asking whether an action like that could truly be justified. No matter how you look at it, the answer should be a resounding yes. All you have to do is listen to the president's own words. President Trump said, quote, we have an invasion of drugs, invasion of gangs, invasion of people, and it's unacceptable. It's very simple. We want to stop drugs from coming into our country. We want to stop criminals and gangs from coming into our country, end quote. Trump campaigned for president on securing the southern border of the United States, and he plans to do precisely that for the American people. This is not some empty political anecdote either. These bad hombres really are pouring over our border every day. Consider just one day's traffic at a single section of the border that lacks a physical barrier. Among those caught crossing into Texas on one day were a Mexican previously convicted in Georgia for child molestation, a Honduran previously convicted in North Carolina for child molestation by a custodian, and another Honduran who was previously identified in Florida as a member of MS-13. Immigration and Customs Enforcement reports that 266,000 illegal aliens with criminal records have been arrested in just the past two years alone. This agency also arrested 1,500 aliens for human trafficking and deported 10,000 gang members in just the last fiscal year. Despite this hard data proving that ICE helps keep us safe, many politically motivated Democrats say they want to abolish this agency. On top of the criminal aspect, many illegal aliens arrive and are very sick with contagious diseases. Their health problems commonly overwhelm the facilities available in the small towns near the border where they arrive. The Border Patrol reports that on a single day, over 2,000 migrants had to be driven three hours to the nearest hospital for treatment. Clearly, there is an emergency on our southern border. President Trump is right to do everything he can to protect American citizens from criminals and carriers of disease. Only a big wall can do the job, and President Trump is just the big man to make it happen. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Illegal immigration burdens our schools and social services and opens doors to criminals and terrorists. Outdated visa programs divert jobs from Americans. PhyllisSchlafly.com chronicles these outrageous unfair practices and provides answers. Go online to PhyllisSchlafly.com. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. 800-951-0592. I've got a very limited, awesome opportunity. I'm excited about it. We don't do them often because you just can't get them. We've got 22 U.S. $10 Indians. Right, and this is Lady Liberty in the Indian headdress. Super awesome coin. It's my second favorite coin. 
I like the five dollar a little better because I like the male Indian, right? Because I'm a race. <laughs> well, I'm a sexist. I guess that that doesn't make me a racist. It makes me a sexist. Uh, but the ten dollar Indian, seven hundred and thirty five dollars, which in it, all by itself, that's a really good price. But I'm going to do one better. When you buy a ten dollar Indian for seven thirty five, you also get an ounce of silver to go with it. You're gonna get a, a, a silver round, something of that effect, one ounce of silver and a ten dollar Indian for seven thirty five. So if you want to use the F word and say you're gonna get the silver for free, okay, I don't care either way. Uh, $735, a good little package. You get a fractional gold piece and an Indian to boot and an ounce of silver. Can't beat it. 735 bucks. There's only 22 of them available. 800-951-0592. Before we get to the border, because, you know, I'm not going to talk about how many are coming, not coming, all that stuff. I'll tell you about financially what it cost us. But something happened two weeks ago, and it really didn't make any sense to me. And then something happened the other day that made what happened two weeks ago make perfect sense. So two weeks ago, so we go back in our little time machine. That was my time machine sound. Bill and, or uh, that wasn't Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. That was uh, Mike Myers and Dana Carvey. Uh, ECB President Mario Draghi issued a statement. So you think about, you know, the EU, that's their central bank, and they do all these. They have the same thing like our central bank. They have the meeting, the press conference, the statement, right? They got it all. But he issued a statement saying that the European Central Bank needs to approve any operation in the foreign reserves of Eurozone countries, including gold and large foreign currency holdings. It was just odd. Because that's kind of been allegedly the understanding that the Eurozone countries, before they make any big adjustment to their currency reserves would kind of have to get permission from the ECB or sign off or what, you know, ah, permission is probably the right word. It was just odd. I was like, hmm, I wonder what it is that he's referencing. And I didn't know. The ECB shall approve both the operation and the foreign reserve assets with all member states and the transactions with their foreign exchange working balances above a certain threshold. So he's like, hey, there's a dollar. You know, you don't have to call me to, to do something small, but there's a certain dollar level that we need to be involved. doesn't say what the level is. The purpose of this, okay, remember this is the European Central Bank president, is to ensure consistency with the exchange rate and monetary policy of the union. In other words, hey, don't get crazy and think you have independence. You're in this banking fiat currency trash, and we want to keep you in it. I mean, really, that's what it says. Because why wouldn't uh, a sovereign nation be able to decide on its own what it wants to do? Maybe they don't want to hold euros. 
Maybe they don't want to hold dollars or yen or renminbi or gold. I don't know. Right? Maybe they want to buy a bunch of euros or a bunch of dollars or a bunch of renminbi or a bunch of gold. Then all of a sudden, the other day, it made perfect sense. The Wall Street Journal reported, I want to say this was two days ago, that in Italy's ruling populace, so the ruling government in Italy, pushed ahead efforts to seize control of the central bank and its gold reserves. <laughs> yeah, you don't think it's coming? Oh, it's coming. In other words, they're, they're saying, hey, listen, the gold is not the central banks. It's the gold of the people. See, we listen, and we're the same. We operate just like Italy and all these other countries. Right? We pretend that the gold is the banks. Right? It's part of their official reserve holdings. And remember now, gold's a tier one asset. The government of Italy said, we need a change of course at the Bank of Italy. If we think about what happened in the, in the last years, I'd say he's probably right. right. Think about our central bank. When's the last time they got anything right? Seriously. I mean, let's just go back to December. December, they were telling us how great the economy was. Everything was fantastic. We're going to keep raising rates. Now look at them. Oh, we're, we're not raising rates. Matter of fact, we're going to stop the balance sheet sell-off. Matter of fact, we got to load up on treasury debt because no one's buying it. And now the Italians, by the way, the Italians, they got 3,000 metric tons of gold. That's not like a little amount. Now that statement makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yeah. You got your gold yet? You better hurry. 800-951-0592. 800-951-0592. The U.S. $10 Indian. So these the Indians were made. These The Indians went with the Saints. So you had the Liberty Series, where you had the 20, the 10, the 5, the 2 and a half. And that went all the way from 1866 to 1907. And then Teddy Roosevelt commissioned Augusta St. Gaudens uh, to make the new $20 saint. And uh, I don't know, I, I want to say uh, if it was St. Gaudens, it may have been Bella Pratt who designed the Indian. And so you had the saint, and then you had the ten dollar, the five dollar, and the two and a half dollar Indians went with it. But the Indians, and not, not the ten dollar, didn't wasn't in, didn't have the incused design where they carved into it. But when the plague came around, people thought that the Indians carried the plague, and so therefore they stopped minting them for a large portion. So there's far fewer Indians out there that there are, you know, the liberties or the saints. But what an opportunity. You know, you think about just a regular $10 liberty is seven ten. So here you're going to get the $10 Indian for seven thirty five. dollars It's only $25 more, which is fantastic. But then I'm going to give you an ounce of silver on top of it. So you're not, not quite, but you're, you're talking about about a $10 difference between the two. Incredible opportunity. 800-951-0592. Uh, we're down to 18 left. We only had 22. It's just how the cookie crumbles. They're hard to get. You don't get Indians a lot. At 800-951-0592. Gold back above 1300 Get ready. 
earnings season is coming. I'm going to, it's going to be tough. The dollar showing uh, some weakness now, and rightfully so. Uh, we'll have to see how it all plays out. But the news of the day coming out of Italy, uh, and again, this was the other day. So two weeks ago, word must have been out. The Italians must have been letting the e- European Central Bank know we're making a move. And we're making a move on the Italy's Central Bank gold holdings. By the way, I said 3,000 metric tons. It's 2,452 metric tons, or well, 51.8. So right now, Italy, I believe, is the fourth the third or the fourth largest gold holder in the world. Of course, Russia's getting ready to pass them. The Chinese aren't far behind. But here's what they had to say. The ruling party has been attacking the Bank of Italy for not preventing the banking crisis. I mean, right, isn't this, wasn't this their job? blamed it for the losses suffered by the mom-and-pop savers. You know, when you think about it, look at here. Look at all you people that did it right. Look at what they're making you do. You can't buy bonds. Well, you can buy, I guess you can risk it, right, and, and hope that Simon Property doesn't walk away from them. You can't go get your bank CD. Remember, that's what you're supposed to do. Hey, I'm going to buy a CD or I'm going to buy a treasury bond and try to live off the interest. It's not by accident that when the baby boomers got here, there was no interest. Right? Kind of like the same interest they have in paying off the national debt. Now I'm starting to think, you know, I wasn't sure. You know, they keep saying no inflation, no inflation, no inflation. And we kind of know that's a lie. And now you're starting to hear about, you know, $20 an hour pay now. I think it's coming. I don't think, I mean, I almost guarantee it. That's what happens. You can't just keep printing money out of nowhere. It's not worth anything. Right? Think about where the 2.4% Fed's funds rate, we can't go any higher. They're telling you. The money's not worth anything. And now the Italians have said, you know what? We're tired of you guys. If you are here with your current account in the red, it's because the people who were supposed to control things didn't do so. It's a great point, right? Hey. These are the guys, remember, they're supposed to create stability, right, full employment, all this other stuff, right? They're supposed to control these banks. This week, uh, Italian lawmakers are asking Parliament to pass two laws. One law would instruct the central bank's owners, most of them the private banks, to sell their shares to the Italian treasury, by the way, at prices from the 1930s. Hey, we want you to give up that gold. The other law declared the Italian people the owner of the banks of Italy's reserves of 2,451.8 metric tons of gold at around a hundred and two billion dollars at its current price. The Wall Street Journal said such a move could in theory widen the scope for the selling of gold and reduce the bank's reserves which help underpin the house of cards financial system that these banks have created. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. 800-951-0592. That's a whole new spin, isn't it? That's not just bringing the gold home. 
that's taking the gold away from the banks. And, and I, I don't know. Says the Wall Street Journal thinks they've got the votes. Thinks they can get to 60%. Listen, I don't know how many shocks the financial system can have. Remember, this thing's all built on debt. Speaking of debt, what is it costing us at the border? And I'm not talking about detaining them because there's a cost of that. I'm not talking about how 70% of them stay on social welfare programs while the, their entire lives. Not talking about that part either. How about the ones that come in here and produce? In other words, hey, I come in here and I get paid cash under the table or I steal someone's identity and I'm able to get a job. And you're like, wait a minute, double, what do you mean cost us? If they're producing, they're being productive members of society. Mm, Not really. Immigrants may contribute greatly to the U.S. economy, less so if they're here illegally, but they sure aren't spending all of their hard-earned money here. According to the latest data, which somehow it's only 2017, really. We got computers. Can't tell us what 2018 is yet. Legal and illegal aliens sent a record amount of dollars out of the country. $148 billion in 2017 alone. By the way, it's been going up about 10 to $15 billion a year. Now the big waves coming in. I mean, right, where are we going to be? Pretty soon here, right? 20 or 20, 200 billion or more a year leaving. Analysis of the data found that Mexico was the top receiver, not as much as I thought, 30 billion. They were the largest, right? 30 billion. Know how much Mexico sends money up here? (laughs) Uh, 1.8 billion. The other way around. We said $30 billion goes there, only $1.8 billion comes back. China was second at $16 billion. India was third at $11 billion. And then the rise of Central America, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, all three sending more money home. Uh, about $16 billion from those three countries uh, and, and rising. That's where the big growth is, I guess, according to the data. So just something else to think about. Even the ones that quote-unquote produce. Shipping more of that wealth out of the United States. Make sure your wealth's protected. Right? Wealth insurance, gold and silver, the $10 Indian, and an ounce of silver, 735 bucks at 800 951 Everybody take care. We'll be back for a hump day tomorrow.